been a while since we looked at the latest from Lenovo, but today that all changes. We got the X1 Carbon 6th generation for 2018. In fact, we've got two of them. Today we'll take a look and I'll tell you what's good and what's bad. Stay tuned. There's few laptops out there that I consider as iconic as the X1 Carbon. In fact, it's one of Lenovo's flagship devices. If you're in business or enterprise, or you just want a really good productivity laptop, well, the X1 Carbon has been it. It's one of the lightest devices out there. And for 2018, the sixth generation does a lot of cool stuff that I really like, including an outstanding display with HDR and Dolby Vision. But don't worry, like all things Lenovo, you have tons of options. So if you still want a full HD version with touch, well, you can do that too. Hopefully you like jet black because boy, is the X1 Carbon dark. Uh, this is honestly the darkest black I've ever seen in a laptop. Now, if you don't like black, there is that new silver version, which was announced, I believe, last year. That is now available too, so you can get that in two colors. Uh, this is obviously the black one. They also changed the logo a bit again this year. So the ThinkPad is all darked out. Uh, really nice, subtle branding here. I love the X1 too with the little red. It's, I think, very elegant looking. It looks great. You still, of course, got the eye that lights up to let you know it's on um, and it slowly shifts between the uh, on and off, really cool touch there. Um, it is still a fingerprint magnet though. So this is one reason why I don't like the black. And that's where I think the silver one comes in. If I had to choose, I'd probably pick the silver just because it's a lot cleaner. Let's turn to the side here to see what we have going on for ports. We have two type C ports here. Now this port here is kind of unique. This is for the dock that Lenovo sells as an accessory. It's a pretty serious dock. So if you're into doing that kind of thing, well, that's what this whole port is for. But within that port is another type C port. So you actually got two of them. Uh, it is Thunderbolt 3. So you can do four PCIe lanes and all that kind of stuff. You also charge the laptop that way and you get a little LED letting you know it's on. So really nice there. USB type A, full HDMI. This is a business laptop, so not unsurprising we're going to see that. I still appreciate having a full HDMI port. So that's great to see. Turn to the other side, not too much going on. You got your headphone jack. You have your ventilation here for the CPU. A unique design. This is what Lenovo does. They put it on the side. Some people like it. And you know, if you're using a mouse, I'm not a huge fan of vents on the side, but it's not too bad with these new processors. Now the USB type A, and of course the Kensington lock. Finally on the back, you have this unique drawer. So it is a SIM slot slash SD. So it takes a micro SD. Not as ideal as a full SD card slot, but still kind of cool. You use a little pin to pop that open. Now this does not actually have a LTE modem in it. Uh, there are versions that do, so that's where you would put the SIM card in there as well. It doesn't support, as far as I know, eSIM. The only reason I don't know a lot about this, the version with LTE A, LTE Advance, is not out yet. I believe it comes out in May. So if you want to order this with a full 4G connection, you're going to have to wait a couple months, but that's where you'll put the SIM. Turn to the bottom, you see you got some normal screws here, so you can pop this off, and there is the intake vent for the CPU. All right, let's look at the display here. So one of the new things that they have this year is this privacy screen. So you can slide this over and it unlocks your camera. Uh, that is good for people who like privacy. It's a little clumsy, you find it kind of hard to use, but uh, it basically shuts off the microphone and blocks the camera. So if you want privacy, there you go. The trade-off with that option though, is you don't get Windows Hello via facial recognition. So it's one or the other. Let's take a look at this display. This is the full HD version. So this is a 14 inch. One thing that's unique about the X1 Carbon that I always liked about it is a 14 inch display. I really like that size. Uh, this is full HD, but it's matte, but it's also touch. So it's like kind of the best of both worlds. If you're really concerned about battery life and you really want to get a laptop that lasts you a long time, this is going to be the version you get. I really like this display. It's like I said, no glare on it, it just looks really cool. And it's just weird to have a touch screen that's all that, right? Um, usually don't find that, but nice choice here. The display does go all the way down too, so that's always a thing. You can see the bezels are pretty thin here, nice balance between the top and bottom, excellent design. Looking at the keyboard deck here, well, you got Lenovo's awesome keyboard. And listen, I'm part of this club. This is easily one of the best keyboards. It's just amazing to use. If you've never used a Lenovo device, they're one of the easiest, I think, to adapt to and get used to typing on. Uh, and I just love the design and the layout. They still have the weird function control keys reversed. It's not a deal breaker for me, 
does take a little time to get used to. I believe you can still reverse it in the software, but that makes it even weirder in my opinion. I also really appreciate the fact you have a dedicated print screen button down here at the bottom that also when you combine it with the function key launches the snipping tool, which I use probably about, I don't know, 20 times a day. That's just a really cool feature here. Obviously this is a productivity oriented laptop. So there you go. Coming to the trackpad, you still got the nice smooth. I really love the click on this. It's very soft and gentle. Uh, more importantly, Lenovo, this is where I get nerdy about this stuff. They used to use Synaptics all the time. And then last year's model, they used a hybrid of Synaptics and Precision, which I thought was pretty good, but still felt a little weird. This year, I'm glad to say this is just full Precision and they're better for it. This is a really good trackpad. I love the feel of it. Everything about it is excellent. Still got your track point button there as well. If you're a fan, I'm not, but still cool with they're keeping it. Finally, you have a fingerprint sensor tied to the motherboard. So this is a really good for security. Uh, you can use it for Windows Hello authentication, obviously. Not my favorite fingerprint reader though. It works, it's just not the best fingerprint reader I've used out there. I think Lenovo can definitely do better in that regard, but it does have a little cool LED that lights up to let you know where it is, so that's kind of neat. Let's talk about one of the banner features of the X1 Carbon for 2018. It is the display choices. So I just told you the full HD versions, mats, touch, really cool. Awesome choice if you want battery life. So for about $180 extra, you can get WQHD with Dolby Vision HDR. And boy, is this an outstanding choice. So it's 500 nits of brightness, which is very bright. So you're going to be covered outdoors. It's also full glossy. It is non-touch though, so that is a drawback. But this is easily one of the best displays I've ever used. And I say that for a couple of reasons. First of all, if I were to show you this in person, you would immediately think it was an OLED display. Now, OLED displays are pretty great looking, but they drain battery life like crazy. And you don't have that issue here. And that's what's really cool about this. I was able to get seven, eight hours with a Core i7 processor and this display. To me, that's outstanding. That's basically all day battery life. Sure, I'd like 10 hours, but for this resolution, it is very good and that color. Now, if you bump it up to 500 nits, they'll drop down, of course, so just keep that in mind. But if you like watching movies, this is gonna be your display. And talk about color accuracy. This gets 100% sRGB. Now, that's not too uncommon. We see a lot of that in high-end Ultrabooks, but this also gets 100% Adobe RGB. I've never actually seen that in an Ultrabook before. It's usually around 70, 80% is on the good end. So that's impressive. You also get 99% NTSC, which again, very color accurate display here. So Adobe Vision and Windows 10 is getting full HDR support with I believe the Spring Creators update due in a couple weeks. So this will even get better in the coming weeks as well, but it just looks really, really nice. If you like watching movies, this is gonna be your choice. The only downside, like I said, it's non-touch and you also can't do Windows Hello facial recognition with that. So you can only get the privacy camera option. And that's a tough trade off there, but for 180 bucks, this is a steal of a display right here. Let's talk about hardware options here. So there are quite a few unique things I wanna talk about. First of all, you can get Core i5, Core i7. These are Intel eighth generation processors, 15 watt range. They are the new quad core ones though, so that's pretty cool. But what's really unique about this is in most Ultrabooks of this class, I expect the Intel 8550U. That's a standard Core i7 that we find in almost all 13 inch laptops. So the XPS 13, the HP Spectres. This though is running the 8650U. That's the same processor found in Surface Book 2, 13 and 15 inch. And that's really cool. That means if you get the Core i7 version with V Pro, this thing goes up to 4.2 gigahertz. That makes this one of the fastest 14 inch Ultrabooks on the market today. Now, you don't get a full GPU, so you're still gonna use UHD 620. It doesn't have any discrete graphics. So don't forget, this is a workstation. It is meant for business. You're not gonna do a lot of graphics on there. But if you need raw processing, this is a really good processor that I haven't seen in a lot of laptops yet. So kudos to Lenovo for giving that as an option. But if you just want a Core i5, you can do that too and save yourself some money. When it comes to RAM, of course, you get eight or 16 gig options, so nothing unique there. But another cool thing is the SSD. So you do get a performant SSD in here, but this one is the one terabyte version. It's Opal, it's all that cool stuff, but it's one I have never used before. It is the Samsung PM981. I she didn't know that existed. So, but the benchmarks are off the charts. This gets 3,200 read speeds and 2,400 write speeds. One thing I just want to talk about is the Lenovo Vantage app. So Lenovo in the past has had a lot of messy apps that allowed you to configure their devices. Well, they've 
put them all into one app now called Lenovo Vantage. It's a UWP app, so it's updated through the store. It's really nice, actually. It allows you to check for drivers and new updates for the device itself. Plus, it allows you to do things like configure the hardware, like the keyboard backlighting, the display, audio stuff, controlling the microphones. And it's really nice. There's even now a Wi-Fi security setting, which scans your network, I guess, and makes sure that it's secure. I don't know. They don't really explain it. But overall, really nice app. I like to see these companies make a better effort here. And I think Lenovo is doing that. Okay, let's bring it all in. X1 Carbon 6th Generation for 2018. I really like this laptop. I know it's a familiar theme here, but there's a lot of good stuff on the market these days. And the X1 Carbon for this year has been nothing but improvements in my opinion. I really like all the display choices you have when configuring it. That Dolby Vision display is just drop dead gorgeous. I really recommend you get that unless you really prioritize battery life. Keyboard is awesome. Trackpad is fantastic. Precision all the way. Just a really nice design. Uh, I just have fun using it. I also like the port selection here. Now, if I had a choice, I would get this with LTE because I'm big on that. The other downside about this laptop, it's super expensive. The one we have here configured is around $2,500, $2,600, which is, yeah, that's surface level, folks. But people who have Lenovo's and specifically this device are huge fans of it, and it lasts a long time. It is military standard, so it's going to have you know, impact resistance and all that cool stuff as well. Now, not everything is perfect. For instance, the audio. I'm not a big fan of these speakers. And I know some people are gonna say, well, it's a business laptop, blah, blah, blah. But if you wanna get that awesome display, I kind of prefer to have really good speakers. They're on the bottom edge. They don't sound that great. They're not the worst speakers I've heard, but I think Huawei has proven to me that you can put some really amazing speakers in a device. And for this price range, I expect a little bit better. The fingerprint reader is also terrible. So I'll get the Windows Hello facial recognition option if you can unless you can get the Dolby Vision, which then you can't. So that's a tough choice as well. But if you're looking for a productivity laptop that's going to last you a long time and has all that Hallmark flagship stuff from Lenovo, well, X1 Carbon is there. Remember, it's under two and a half pounds or 1.13 kilograms, making it one of the lightest and fastest devices out there in the market. And it's better off for it. So there's a quick review of the new X1 Carbon 6th generation for 2018. Now, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have a comment or a question, leave it below and I'll try to answer them. We'll have more information about this device in the description below as well. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. You're, just, you're hitting the camera all over the place. Okay. Say. Okay, let's talk about 